instead. So here you have a, a, the allocated uh, resources, right, to, to run your scripts. And if you make a zoom in of these uh, nodes, you will realize that they, th this is the architecture that they have. There are several cores sharing some memory, right, as I mentioned previously. So here I depicted one uh, uh, problem that can arise in, in, in HPC clusters. So uh, for instance, if you uh, allocate more uh, resources here on the computing uh, nodes that you need, so then you will be under using uh, the cluster on the using your your project resources right or uh, in, on the other in the other side uh, maybe you are located some uh, hardware right but then you are over exceeding the capacity by running a massive parallel computations on uh, a, a few uh, hardware uh, cores so that can, that can happen, and that's why you need to be aware of this problem. And there are some tools that are available at our center uh, to monitor how the resources are used. In particular, uh, for Kebnekaise, we have this tool that is called Job Usage. If you click on this link, then you will uh, you will go to this uh, uh, explanation here. Uh, that is in, in from our, one of our courses at HPC 2N and how it works when you submit the job as Birgitte mentioned previously with the S batch command you will get a job ID it's a number that you can paste uh, besides this job usage command and that will give you a URL so that you can copy and paste in your local browser and in that case you can see uh, how much uh, percent of the hardware that you allocated is being used, right? Also, uh, you will get information about the memory that is being used. And, and if, if you request the GPUs, then you will get also the, the, the information. This is very useful in, in particular for parallel programs, right? Because uh, if you request less or more, then you will see a different uh, a, a expect a expected uh, the behavior here. So this is our tool that we have at HPC 2N, Adobe Max, uh, you, uh, because you can have an interactive node session uh, by using the uh, interactive command. Then you can uh, do the top or execute the top command directly on the compute nodes. And then you can get some uh, information about the resources that are, uh, that are uh, uh, used. So, in this part, I will talk about the different uh, uh, parallel uh, programming uh, paradigm that, that, that can be uh, seen in R in this case, right? And uh, this, this could be useful in your, in your research project, for instance. And here we start with the threaded uh, programming. So, so uh, 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 some languages like Fortran, C, C++, using a standard application programming uh, interface that is called OpenMP, uh, that allows you to create some uh, uh, threaded mechanism. In a thread uh, means a, 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 a task, yes, that will be executed uh, uh, simultaneously with respect to the others, right? Uh, this is what, what I'm talking about in this in, in this context. So uh, here the important point is that all the threads have access to the same memory and they do the computation simultaneously. As, as, as you uh, remember before I said that uh, because the, the, the threads or the cores in this case uh, share the same memory, uh, the, the memory transfer it can be uh, very, very fast, yes? And so the threading mechanism uh, makes use of this high bandwidth of the local memory. So one can control uh, this uh, threaded behavior with some environmental variables. For instance, in OpenMP, you can use this flag here to set the number of threads. So because this uh, threaded mechanism comes in, in external libraries, in particular for linear algebra, 
So you don't need to, to modify your R code by yourself. You just need to modify the number of threads with this external environmental variable in your batch script, for instance. You didn't need to, to do anything else. But uh, uh, in the case of uh, the R, uh, there are also some other mechanisms to get the, the threads uh, working. So what you can do here at this point, uh, if you have a, a, a threaded programming, is that you can check uh, the libraries and packages that you are using and that could have a threaded mechanism, yes? So some packages, in particular, the, the, the packages containing uh, the multi-core uh, features uh, have uh, some, some flags for setting the number of threads. And, and uh, you can check if, if, you, if you, your code uh, has these features and you can, you can see how to control the number of available threads. So uh, then uh, you can use some tools available at your center. I mentioned before the job usage at the HPC 2N that can help you uh, to uh, see the behavior or the, the resources uh, usage. So here there are some examples the, that, 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 that could uh, 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 cause uh, some uh, over-exceeded resources in our, in our HPC centers. In particular today uh, for R, uh, this is just one example, but because there are many uh, uh, parallel packages in R, the situation it could be more uh, elaborated. Yes, uh, and here I, I mentioned just that uh, one possibility to overexceed the, the 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 hardware allocated. Yes, you shouldn't do this. <laughs> so it's it's by creating a cluster with n cores, right? For instance, with the instruction make a cluster. Then uh, you can start a training machine learning model, and some packages have this flag, yes, or uh, even uh, this flag, or even n cores, right? Uh, and then here you can you can set this to some value that runs on your laptop, right? And, and if you go to a HPC cluster, because there are more cores available, so then uh, it's easy to overexceed the resources that you, you, you want to use. So take care of this. And also, uh, once you submit the simulation that it is running, also take a look at the, the, the statistics with this tool. Uh, you can uh, remember that you can overexceed the allocated resources, or you can uh, underuse the resources that you uh, allocated. So, uh, in particular for R and in the threaded programming model that I mentioned before, so R doesn't have a threaded mechanism by by itself. Yeah, so you you, you cannot get R threads, uh, for instance. However, some functions provide, uh, provided by certain packages, like parallel, do parallel, and some uh, more uh, uh, complex libraries like caret, for instance, uh, they have uh, uh, functions or on their need that allow you to parallelize the code. Uh, for instance, I mentioned here the for each function, right? So, but notice that this is not a real threaded mechanism because the memory is not shared across the, the workers. Yeah? And because the memory is not shared, this could lead also to data replication. And this is uh, relatively common in R programs. For instance, if you first uh, declare a, a data frame, yes, and then you start uh, some uh, uh, threaded uh, library uh, provided by pa parallel, do parallel, and so on. 
So then if you modify the data frame uh, inside a for each loop, then you will replicate the complete the data frame on all the the the, post, the 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 threads of the workers, right? So this is also a way to over exceed the resources because if you go, for instance, to the do parallel the, the job usage, sorry, so you will see that the allocated memory it's over exceeded, yeah, because the data is replicated over the over the over the threads. So this is also good to monitor with the job usage command or the top, yeah? So now I will talk about the second model for uh, doing the, the parallelization and it is called a distributed. So if you remember uh, the feature of the threaded programming is that the cores share the, some memory but uh, this is operation doesn't scale beyond a single node. Yeah? So there are some nodes, for instance, now uh, uh, on Kennekaise, where you can have more than 120 cores. But if you want to scale to your code to more than that, you need something else. You need a distributed computing. And then uh, it, this paradigm works by exchanging data across the, the course using send and receive operations. Yeah? And the standard uh, API for doing this is message passing interface, MPI. And in general, this requires refactoring your code. In the case of uh, R specifically, so R also doesn't have a multi-processing mechanism by itself, yes? But there are some functions that allow you to do uh, this type of parallelization, in particular for each. And if you want to do MPI, that is mentioned here, R provides you with a package called RMPI but you also need to learn the features of a, a MPI to deal with that. So here I included a section for the big data. Yes, if you have some big uh, data arrays, big data frames, yeah. So in R, there are uh, several tools uh, to deal with this type of, of, of data. And here I mentioned uh, uh, some of them. Arrow uh, previously was called Dix frame, can deal with the, the, the big arrays and other tools include the data table and big memory. Yeah? So uh, they can help you to deal with this uh, type of data. I will do now a short demonstration, yes, of, uh, of how to parallelize a simple loop. Uh, this is very common in, in research uh, projects where one has a for loop that performs several tasks in, in between, right? Uh, for each iteration. And uh, so there, there are some ways to parallelize this type of uh, uh, for loops in R. So the way the procedure here just mimics some complex task, which takes one second and uh, we we use one second just because uh, it can be achieved on the uh, the time of this lecture right but it will just mimic some complex thing that you need to do so you if you execute this for loop right with four iterations you will on a single cpu you will see the following you will have a uh, one uh, wait during one second, then the next wait, one second and so on. So in total, it will take four seconds. But if you uh, have more CPUs and you are able to parallelize this for loop here, then you, you can get the following. You can distribute the task over several uh, CPUs. And then instead of four seconds, you will get uh, one fourth. Yes, we, uh, around one, one second. Yeah? So uh, here I provide you with this example. I'm using the do parallel uh, uh, 
a package in R to do this. Uh, I, I will load these modules here, and you can you can use your own your your, your preferred version of R. So I am using this because, uh, as 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 it was mentioned before, we have different type of uh, CPUs at the moment, and this is the R version that is present in all of them. Yeah, so that's why. Uh, your code can get uh, uh, can get uh, can be run on all of this, and then the waiting time in the queue is reduced. Otherwise, uh, uh, there are older versions of R, but they are available only in the old hardware that we have. Yeah. Okay, so then I can explain you briefly what is this. A code about so we have some number of iterations for then here I define a function which is the of the number of iterations and executes the for loop uh, if you are an expert R programmer so you will see that the for loop in R is not a, a good way to to do this calculation but this is just to illustrate that this is an an sleep an awaiting function for one second right and also because uh, although the for loops are not fast for uh, the uh, fast computations here, uh, so they are uh, uh, good for doing uh, many computations for each iteration, right? Not fast, relatively fast operations here, but imagine that you have several uh, functions here to be executed and you don't have other way to do this. Uh, unless you use a for loop. So this is the serial function, what I call serial function. Then I take the timings here with this uh, system time function. And then I parallelize the function by using the for each, yes? Uh, uh, and using the do par uh, instruction here. And finally, I execute the, the, the sleep function for one second. How do, do you execute this function? Then you start your cluster, make your cluster, register the cluster, and then you do the, the parallelization here. So notice here that I am also taking the time, and, and finally I print out the parallel time. So how to run this uh, program? So Birgitte showed you that you can write your batch script and that is, 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 is the recommended way. But now, because this is a very short example, right? It's a very short example. So, uh, and I will need this line only once, then I can execute the, the code as, as it, it is mentioned here. So here I will write the project. HPC 2N 2024. Let me see if this is the correct one. Yes, it's the correct one. And then here I need to define the number of tasks and also the number of cores per task, right? This is different. This is the number of tasks that it will, it will be executed. Uh, this is the number of cores that, I, that are reserved for the task here, right? And uh, here is the way to execute the script. This with add a script, and I use this, these options. You can take a look at the help of R script and see if you need to save or you, if you need to restore uh, the, the data that was saved. But I don't need to save and I need to restore. And that's uh, why I execute it uh, as it is. And then I execute the sleep.r file. 
So in my case, uh, the sleep.r file was already present in this folder because I just copied with the button here. I copied and pasted the script. So then I can execute this. But of course, if you are executing this script several times or if it takes a longer time, right? So then you need to write your batch script and write all these options as Birgitte mentioned previously. Let me see. Okay, this is telling me that our script is not uh, available. And that's why, that's because I didn't load the modules here first. Yeah, I will load them. And I can check that in this folder, my sleep function, sleep.r is present. You can see that it is here. Yeah. And I just copied and pasted this script here. Then I can run the script. So once again, uh, I am running this command as run just because this is a very short uh, script. But if you want uh, to run this uh, uh, script and it takes a long time, then it's more convenient to write all these lines in a batch script and submit this with S batch. So as you can see here, uh, the lapse time for the serial code uh, took uh, four seconds. But if we use this uh, parallel cluster, then it takes one uh, second approximately. So here there are some uh, uh, exercises. The first one is shows you how to run uh, this problem, which is an, a 2D integration where one partitions the beans in the, of, in the X and Y directions. So you, you don't need to parallelize the code. It's already parallel, right? And the task is that you, you need to run the code for different number of cores. And this is the important point that you need to correct the fix me strings in both the R script, which is here. Yes, the number of workers or the number of cores, yeah? And also you need to correct the number of, 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 of cores or the task in this case here in the batch script. So they should match. Yeah. Otherwise, this could lead to some underused or overused uh, uh, resource. Uh, how to see that? Uh, for instance, imagine that you, you, you request here uh, four, four uh, tasks, right? But here in the cluster, you request eight cores or eight workers, right? So in this case, you will be generating a cluster with eight workers, but in the batch script, you requested only a four, yeah? So in that case, you will overuse the resources. On the other way, uh, if you request here uh, eight cores or eight tasks per course, but here you forgot and you only request one, then you will be wasting your project hours, right? Because, uh, yes, you will allocate eight times more. So then here in this part, uh, this is a challenge. You can increase the grid size to uh, this number and submit the job to the queue. Yes. In this case, uh, you submit the job by using the sbatch file with sbatch, as Birgitte mentioned. And then you can use the, the job usage at hpc2n or the top command at ubmax. So this, this exam, example or exercise is more realistic, but also more advanced. And here you have a data frame. So you partition the data frame in pieces and compute each piece on each uh, worker by using the for each function. 
and then just uh, uh, collect the, the partial sums and print out the values. So here is an example on how to, to do this, and we also provide you with some uh, solutions. So let me go how, uh, let me know how it goes. We have an, until when, Birgitte? When, when will we finish? 14.30. 14. 14 more minutes. Okay, yes, in 14 minutes. So, yes, let's try this. Uh, please let me know uh, again about this uh, lecture and um, I would be grateful for your feedback on this. Thank you. Yes, and I am here for to answer uh, your questions.